and thank you for joining us. I'm Brenna Rose. In what must be a first, an open records request has led to both a protective order and a kidnapping complaint. Channel 8's Burt Mumlow reports on more controversy for the town of Gore. Burt. When does one person's persistence become another person's harassment? That's the big question being debated in this small town. It was an exchange captured on the town hall's surveillance video back in May when former board member Gideon Miller was asking the town clerk, Lisa Settlemeyer, about the status of his open records request. Lisa, these records are readily available and they need to be provided. Records. Voted off the board by his colleagues back in February on the assertion that he doesn't live in the ward he represented, Miller has been taking legal action to try and get his seat back and filed an open records request for all emails to and from city officials for a period of about a year. I fully intend to sue the town for these records if they do not provide them. Miller says a third party can provide the info if the town will simply ask for it. I they are readily available to you. I do not have these records. You don't have them in this office, but you have them. They what are yours. open records request for records that I have? I do not have these records. Please leave my office. I'm not leaving. I don't have to leave. These ladies shouldn't come to work and have to be afraid. Local business owner Shannon Kelly was one of several people who gathered to express their support for the town clerk, many holding signs calling Miller's behavior harassment. Coming up here repeatedly and harassing the office workers, it's not the way to get it done. Are you harassing folks at City Hall? No, we. I don't harass anybody, and uh, I've, I've, I've never harassed anyone. Miller says he simply wants town officials to follow the law. Accountability, transparency, when it comes to government, should not be deemed as harassment. Asking government leaders to do their job in accordance with state statutes should not be deemed harassment. Ms. Settlemeyer, seen here in red and white, declined to interview and referred us to her attorney. On the video, when she leaves the building, Miller at first stays put, at which point she locks the door. Locked me in a building. When she locked the door, did that prompt you to file a kidnapping charge against her? It most certainly did. Uh, in that moment, she propped her foot up against the door and locked me in the building with the key from the outside. Once outside, you can hear someone ask Settlemeyer, what's wrong? What's wrong? Lisa, I'm not a f Leave me. My name's Gideon. I am off the clock. Oh. Leave me alone. I'm just talking. Did Miss Settlemeyer call you a f She did indeed. A few days later, Miller was notified that Settlemeyer had filed a protective order against him. So legally right now you're prohibited from going to town hall? That is correct. Meanwhile, Miller's case against the city over his seat on the board is scheduled for a hearing this Thursday. If that means me going back to my seat, or if it doesn't, that's fine. This doesn't end with Ward 5. This ends with transparency and accountability. A tug of war in gore as one person's push for transparency pushes buttons of alarm at the same time. It's almost like a combat zone. Honestly, it's almost like a, a combat zone. What's the, your re general reaction when you go around town? Are people welcoming to you, or do they look at you and go, oh, there's a troublemaker? Ever since I've lived here, we've made a lot of great friends, made a, you know, a lot of friends that I consider family now, and uh, there's nothing I wouldn't do for just about anyone in this town. We reached out to Ms. Settlemeyer's attorney, but have not heard back yet. We'll let you know what happens at Mr. Miller's court hearing later this week. Bert Mumlow, News Channel 8.